Okay, hello everybody. This is going to be a video for the parents of uh, chess students and how do they get into tournaments. They just something to give you more information about chess tournaments in general. <clears throat> First, let's talk about the chess season. The official scholastic chess season. When I'm talking about scholastic chess season, that means chess tournaments that only involve kids that are in school. It doesn't include adults. And that season, it happens all year long where you can play in those tournaments. That does include adults and doesn't exclude anyone. That means even kids can play in these tournaments. In the Scholastic tournaments, the prizes are trophies. And in adult tournaments, the prizes are 90% uh, most likely going to be uh, cash prizes where kids can also win those cash prizes in those different sections because they have different levels and the way <clears throat> we'll talk about ratings later i just want to get into what's the season the scholastic chess season starts in november that's the first scholastic tournament it's called the scholastic club championship and that's usually held either at Oakland University or Michigan State University. And let me tell you the difference between a club and a chess team. Uh, outside of chess, people think of schools having chess clubs. It's not the same thing as inside of the chess community. A chess club in the chess community and in the scholastic community is a group of kids that gather, gather together in any location to play chess. And most of these locations don't need membership. For instance, the Detroit Institute, Institute of Arts has a chess club there from Friday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. If you go there to just play chess, there is no membership fee or anything. You can just walk up and play. Then most likely you will be invited to play with them competing against other chess clubs around the state of Michigan and Canada. And that tournament happens November 18th. Uh, for instance, I have my own club. It's a club full of my private students and students that I teach in classes. And my club is called Implodian, um, the Implodian Chess Club. And that happens November 8th. And you don't have to, the kids don't have to go to the same school to participate and play on a club. Tournaments after the club. Anything that says team means the kids must attend the same school in order to be on that team. You can't attend another school and go join another school's chess team. So they have tournaments just school versus school, different than clubs. Okay. Um, and the first tournament, uh, the second team tournament after the Scholastic Club, which is November, uh, then we're going to have, of course, there's many tournaments in between. Uh, there's one tournament that happens about five times a year. It's called the Thinker's Challenge. It's a scholastic tournament as well. And I'm going to tell you where you can find all these tournaments as well. What website. <clears throat> but then you have in February, you have your elementary team championship. <clears throat> elementary team championship. And that's February 8th this year. And then February 22nd, you have your middle school team championship. But I shouldn't say middle school. An elementary championship is kindergarten through sixth grade. In February 22nd, the middle school championship, which includes middle school students, is kindergarten through eighth grade. So if there's a school, if you had some schools have K to eight grades, like uh, Charlotte Mason, uh, for instance who I originally designed this video for. And if, since they have K to eight, then the kids that, if the kids are good enough, which happens a lot, kids are good enough that are in kindergarten or first grade to play up there with the eighth graders, um, they can play in that tournament as long as they attend the same school. Uh, even if it's two buildings, as long as it's governed by one head of school, that will be considered the same school and they can compete together on one team. Now, at February 8th and February 22nd, the team consists of four kids per side. So 
For instance, Charlotte Mason would have four kids against the Roper School's four kids. Charlotte Mason's best player will face the Roper School's best player. Then the second board, second best, will play Roper's second best. And we know who's the best by using the rating system. And we'll talk about that uh, a little later. Um, and so it's four kids from Charlotte Mason against four kids from Roper. Whoever scores the most wins, which we call points in the chess community, out of that four, that school wins. So Charlotte Mason wins two. Uh, two of Charlotte Mason kids wins two games. Third kid had a draw because that happens in chess. And then the fourth kid loses. That means Charlotte Mason would have 2.5 points, two and a half points to the Roper schools, one and a half points. And Charlotte Mason wins that match. And at the state championships, you get five team matches, no matter what. It's not a knockout. This is called a Swiss system where you're going to play five games, no matter what the standings are. And whoever has the most points after those five games will receive the appropriate uh, placement. Okay. <laughs> so February 8th and 22nd, that's usually the, the, the dates for the um, uh, states. <coughs> then we have a regional tournament, which is called the Queen City, that's held at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. Uh, and this here... Um, this happens, I think this is going to be, uh, in March and this is, uh, most of the, the, uh, teams from most of the students are from the Midwest area, Illinois, um, Ohio, Kentucky, of course, Michigan, um, you know, those, the Midwest, Indiana, Midwest areas, and they come together and compete there. Now that tournament is a club tournament. It's not school versus school, it's club versus club. And in this tournament, what we do in Michigan, we usually take all the Michigan players that want to attend, combine them together, and then we verse, we, we uh, compete against Ohio and all the different clubs that come to Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. And it lasts one day, and you, pay, and you play five rounds or five games or five matches no matter what, it's a Swiss system as well. And that's the regionals. Um, then you have the nationals. The nationals are usually in the April and May months. Uh, it's usually, um, first, you always have the high school nationals. That comes first. And that's going to be this year, April the 3rd. And when I say high school nationals, that's the nationals that includes high school students. So it's actually kindergarten through 12th grade. Then in, and that's going to be in Columbus, Ohio this year. And then you have in Jacksonville, Florida, kindergarten to eighth grade, which will be considered the middle school nationals because no high school players can play in that. And then in, uh, at the Opryland uh, Hotel and Resort in Nashville, Tennessee, the last one is always the elementary uh, nationals. And that is kindergarten through sixth grade. And they even have a section for kindergarten through third grade. And they have teams that's full of kids that are on third grade and under. And, and this is a team tournament where you have to be from the same school. But also you compete as an individual as well within the team concept. And you can win individual trophies. And you can also attend the tournament as an individual. You don't have to attend as a team. So... It, and that ends the season. Uh, and then you have like chess camps uh, that I do have. So you can contact me personally to find out about the chess camp. Uh, but that will end our season after the nationals. After May is our last nationals, which will be the elementary nationals. <coughs> now, I'm going to get into um, the website. Okay. I want to show you guys. The websites and what. We should we do when we go to these. All right, I'll focus these websites here. Okay. All right, and the first 
website we're going to go to i'm going to show you is um the united states chess federation website so that is uschess.org <clears throat> uschess.org is this website and it'll show you all the things you need to know about us chess national chess events okay if you want to look for a local chess events we go to michess.org and i will show you that website next <coughs> first let's get into what a chess rating is chess rating is some, a number attached to your kid and that is logged and stored in a database to show how good your kid is so that way say like if your kid is just starting out it might be unfair to put them in an open section with kids that are already masters some grandmasters so we would like to have your kid enjoy chess and put them in the appropriate section so a section might be under 600 so 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 ratings start at about like 100 and the higher player you beat the more rating you get the lower player you beat the less rating you may may get so for instance if you're for example if you're if your kid is a 100 and they beat a 1000 player that kid is going to gain a lot of rating points because that player is so much higher than him but if the next round he beats uh, a 200 player he might not he won't gain as many rating points through this mathematical equation that was created called the elo system um and also in order for your you to have official rating the computer needs 25 rated chess games a rated chess game is the games that your kid played in a rated tournament so your online ratings mean nothing it has to be a physical united states chess federation rated tournaments and there's plenty of rated tournaments around this area. So <clears throat> once he gets 25 rated chess games, then your, your, uh, your kid will have an official chess rating. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> what the ratings look like. So I wanna show you this because this is how I gauge my students. I always want my students to look forward to the best, to look to look to be the best. So we're going to look at the top player list. So United States Chess Federation keeps track of every the, the top kids ratings per age. So I'm going to pull up. One of my students here. He is. So you see there, these are the top kid in age nine, he's 22, 22, which means he's a master. A nine-year-old master is very rare, but he's the best kid in the country. And if we go to the bottom of the list, uh, number 100, he's 14, 25. So in order to be one of the top kids in the country uh, at nine years old, if he gets to the rating of 14, 25, he makes this list. Now, why is this list important? If you look at, you can backdate and if you look at the grandmasters, they're usually on this list when they're young kids. So if your kid makes this list, it's a <coughs> it's a, a higher chance that they can actually do this professionally in some cases, or definitely have a talent uh, in this game. So this list is something you want to use as a barometer of how good your kid is. It's the top 100, and here is one of my students from Michigan. William Wang, and you see he is 1578. So a kid like this, even though he's in third grade, he could play up with the 12th graders because his rating is really high for his age. Okay. So, and if you want to find your kid's rating, what you do is you go to player and rating. I like to use the old format. You don't have to do that. You could just look go right here but i like to go here because it lets you type the name in easier and what you do is you just type the last name of your kid once he gets his membership because you have to pay you have to buy a membership and then a michigan chess association membership to play tournaments in michigan and united states chess federation membership to play tournaments outside and once you do that you're going to be in this database with no rating yet until you get a rating and then once you do you'll be able to search your his name by last name first and then the first name and it come up and show this tournament history is rating a graph and everything like that 
Okay. Um, and also on the U.S. chess, we have national events, and it shows us our let's get <coughs> all the national <coughs> events that U.S. chess puts on. Uh, you see, amateur team championship. This is a, a, a tournament where you can t make teams of four with anyone, adults, kids, it doesn't matter. So it's a really fun tournament. I, I actually, as a coach, I played with three of my students on a team. So it was one of the best experiences in my life to actually play with my kids um, competing against other teams. So I like this tournament. But here's the National High School uh, Championship. That's in Columbus. Uh, they give a uh, special race for hotel stays and just go here and you look up all the information and you can register there. All girls national championship. I have an all girls team that's probably going to compete in that. Uh, I'm also a coach at Cass Tech High School. So I have some very strong girls there. So this is also a good tournament there. And you have the national junior high tournament that's in Jacksonville and then the national elementary tournament that's in May, as I said before. And that's the end of the scholastic season. Okay. Now let's go local. <clears throat> now we're local, and this is the mihess.org website. Uh, I'm also I'm actually char in charge of the social media. I am on the Michigan Chess Association board. Uh, like for instance, board of directors. You can go here. <clears throat> that is kind of slow. But it should list all the board of directors. And here you go. There's me right there. You can, it has my phone number. You can hit me up. These are all the board of directors that make the decision regarding uh, the chess, Michigan Chess Association. Okay. And also on this website, uh, if you notice there is, we have a Twitter page. But also we have these, a YouTube page too. And on this YouTube page, it's yours truly does videos with the kids and interviews. If you want to check that out, I actually go over the game and explain some of the strategies of the game uh, to help uh, people. If they watch it, you get some tips and pointers from it. And then maybe your kid can actually get interviewed as well. I have a studio that I bring to a lot of the chess tournaments and so I can interview children uh, and make them the stars. So this also on our website. You go to results, you see the results of all the um, uh, scholastic tournaments. Uh, I forgot to say something about the Michigan Junior. Michigan Junior is the individual state championship, which is the most important state championship in the state of Michigan because the winner of these state championships, whether it's K-5, K-8, or K-12, they get to compete against the other state champions in a big tournament. So if you win the Michigan State Championship in those grades, then they send you to Orlando, Florida to play in a bigger tournament of all the state champions around the country. So that happens and you can find information about that here. Uh, events. This is where you find all the chess tournaments here. Once you log on, find all the chess tournaments. And here, this is a list of all the chess clubs around the state. It could be somewhere you want to know where can you take your kid to play chess. Uh, there's chess clubs listed here. Um, and team rating calculator in the team championships in the reserve section. This is usually used for coaches like me. Um, you have to have a team with an average under a certain rating. Uh, so that's a, a so it could be a lower section for a team that's just starting out like Charlotte Mason or J fit and Royal Oak, where the ratings have to be under a certain level. So so everybody can have fun in competition. And so that's how you uh, calculate your ratings there. So we're going to hit events. So we can look around the state to see what are the chess tournaments that you can compete in. So you see now we have February 1st. There's a tournament at Cranbrook. This is a unrated tournament, I believe. And <clears throat> that means you won't get a rating for this tournament. You're just playing for fun without the rating. But that's still, you know, still chess tournament. Lansing Mini Swiss, and here's the elementary team championship. Remember, team that's school first school, Michigan Youth Chess Challenge, that's in Troy. 
So all these tournaments are listed here in Michigan. And, and all you have to do is hit the link and then you can register for that tournament. All right. So, uh, oh, and also the Michigan Chess membership. So on, your, on a U.S. Chess uh, site, you can buy a U.S. United States membership. Michigan site, you can buy a Michigan membership. But um, here, if you just follow the link, <coughs> actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go here and follow the link here. Let's see. I'm going to select this. And here, if you register for this tournament, it should have, yeah, there we go, online registration.cc. You can actually use the link and go to this site where here you can not only register for the tournament, but you can buy all the memberships all at one time. And I'm going to show you an example because I need to register my son for the high school state championship to represent Cass Tech High School. And I'm going to do this live to help you get through this. So I page down, go to Michigan. There's Michigan elementary primary team. That's K to three junior high high school. I go here. I'm going to hit buy one now. All right. So high school chess championship. And I put in the information Now my son never had a United States chess federation. I would just hit new. And then I would go down and purchase a membership for the first time. But here, <coughs> excuse me, since he already has a membership, I would just type it in here and it should come up. There's more than one Brian Wilson, but my son, uh oh, <coughs> my son is junior. There you go. So I just select this and it should, he is in 12th grade. Okay. And everything is filled out. He's 19, 12, that's his rating. There's an ID. Every kid gets a United States Chess Federation ID. All right. And address, fill that out. All right. Okay. Uh, uncheck this box. Okay, no, I'm okay with that. Now I have to pick the section. So high school team reserve. That means the whole team is average rating is under 1,000. No, he's in a championship because his rating is he's on a team where their where their team is way over a thousand. So I push that sixteen dollars for that. Coach, I am the father and the coach. And I guess I fill that out. Okay. And let's see, 12. I guess I don't have to. Okay, so I guess that's already filled out. Uh oh. Right. Okay. And this shows his uh, USCF United States Chess Federation membership ex expiration date. It expires 2020-831, so we're good. We don't have to buy another one. It will let us know if we had to buy another one or if it was expired. All right. Now, membership. What kind of memberships do we get? Since we buying it for kids, we just go down to kids. So premium youth, premium youth membership, and it shows you what it includes. There's a chess magazine called Chess Life if you want. And it, there's, they're a really good magazine. So if you want to uh, get a membership where the kids can uh, read this magazine and look at the games, you can do that. <clears throat> Regular youth. Also, this is age 15 and under. It includes online access to Chess Life magazine. Then you have Chess Life for kids if you have a younger kid. 12 and under, they might enjoy that more. Or if you just don't want any of the magazines, this is probably the cheapest one. 12 and under, $17. Uh, gets you get a discount if you buy it for two years. And you can even buy a family membership, I believe. Or maybe that's in Michigan chess, you can buy a family membership. So I don't need a membership here. Now this is 
Michigan chess ID right here. <clears throat> and here, my membership hasn't, so my, my son's membership is expired. So he needs another Michigan membership. So I'm just gonna get him one $10, but mainly because I get <coughs> the magazine. Michigan Chess has a magazine, and I get this magazine myself, so I don't need my son to get a magazine as well. But the magazine is something that I suggest everyone should get. It uh, when, when your kid does good or wins on teams, their pictures appear in this magazine, and sometimes even their games, if you submit the games and have somebody review the games, the games will be uh, put in the magazine, and there's uh, people who annotate the game and talk about the game, and the lessons in your kids game so it's something that you would like to get if you have a whole family you can get multiple memberships for the whole family you get a discount on that um i don't know about this patron magazine this is something new i don't know about this at all but usually people get either the magazine the bulletin or the family uh right there okay um <clears throat> So I'm getting a $10 one, number of years is one. Go to next. Um, let's see. Two. Okay, I didn't. <coughs> Something I didn't fill out. Show your rating. Boo boo. And bam, this feels required. Okay. All right. I didn't get his, do his birthday. So it's August 2002, and it was the 19th. Okay. All right. Page through to make sure I have everything filled out. Oh, here we go. Gender. All right. So they have this selection because they, I think they're taking statistics on seeing how many girls play uh, tournaments? They want to increase the membership of girls. Not a lot of girls play chess for whatever reason, so they want to increase that membership. So they're keeping the statistics there. I guess that's an important. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. We'll be able to go now, I think. Yep. So here we go. Now we did we did checkout. Now it's time to go to payment. See, I have sixteen dollars for the member for entry fee for this particular tournament, and then ten dollars for a Michigan membership because it expired. My son has a US uh chess membership. That still is good. That's still good for the moment. So I have to pay $26. All I do is go to my payment, pay the $26, and we're done. Um, so that covers how to enter in a tournament. I think I covered what the chess season is. I covered, um, let me switch here. Okay, I covered uh, what a U.S. what a rating is. Uh, we covered the Michigan Chess website to find our local tournaments. We covered what a team versus a club is. Um, uh, scholastic versus open. So we didn't cover that. Remember, a scholastic tournament is a tournament where only kids that go to school participate. An open tournament is open to everyone all humans so if your kid is good enough which there are low sections in these tournaments by the way so don't just because they're adults doesn't mean they're good so for instance they have sections they're under 1000 and usually there's mostly kids in this section but there's also adults and in these sections sometimes there's cash prizes so 
I've had children that I've trained win seven hundred. I had one kid win over five thousand dollars. So um, these tournaments have big prizes depending on how big the tournament is. So remember, an open tournament is to every for everyone, but they have appropriate rating levels in these tournaments. And then parent etiquette. Now, when you're at the tournament with your kid, it's not like a basketball game. You can't yell at your tournament. You can't even talk to them. So the rule is. Once the kid starts, <coughs> excuse me, parents, you cannot talk to them at all, at all. Okay. If you talk to them, uh, a penalty, um, they might actually lose because of it, because you can't communicate because of the suspicion of cheating. That stuff happens sometimes with parents, you know, how parents are in, in when, they, when the kids are involved. So you can't talk to them at all. And when you're watching a game, if you're allowed in the tournament room, some places don't allow parents in. Some places do. You're suggest I suggest that you watch your kid from behind the kid so the kid can actually see you. Not only you might make them nervous, but um, you don't want a uh, um, appearance of anything improper. So you watch the kid play from behind. And remember, you can't talk. There's tournament directors where the kids can communicate with. If you want to give your kid uh, lunch or something to drink usually you can just walk over to the tournament director and ask them can you give this to my son or my daughter and they wouldn't have a problem doing that wall chart now in these tournaments they have these papers that they put on the wall that shows where your kid goes and it's there's a number next to your kid's name and that number is attached to a table your kid goes to that table and also on the wall chart shows you what color your kid has and if your name your kid's name is first and it shows his opponent and his opponent is second white is always first black is always second so your kid's first he's white at table 57 and that is all listed on the wall chart and it also shows how many points your which is wins your son or daughter scores on those wall charts and hopefully you'll be there with me so i can explain the wall charts further I don't have an example to show you but I did this video to make sure that it, I mean just really a welcoming um, so excited for you guys to uh, take this next step uh, with your children and playing competitive chess in the state of Michigan it's not scary uh, your kid can do this and your kid will enjoy it and once you get into a tournament usually the kids never leave and because it's so much fun. So uh, I think I covered everything. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. And if you have any questions, uh, you can get my, con I mean, you can um, contact me by going to mihs.org, looking at the list of board of governors. My information is there. If I am a coach at your school, uh, you probably already have my email address. And other than that, hope you guys have a wonderful day.